untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black green high toughness synergy deck as chosen by my lovely Patreon supporters and one of the build around cards in the deck is Ancient Lumbernaut, 4 mana for a 1-4 tree folk from Crimson Vow, saying each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So all of a sudden we can flip the script and start dealing damage with our toughness, and toughness doesn't come much higher than on Unhallowed Phalanx, the 5 mana 113 that enters the battlefield tapped, so it can potentially deal 13 damage with a Lumber not in play. Then another great payoff for the deck is Catapult Fodder, 3 mana for a 1-5 zombie, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control 3 or more creatures that each have toughness greater than their power, we get to transform it into Catapult Captain, a 2-6 that can pay 3 mana, tap and sacrifice another creature, and then target opponent loses life equal to the sacrificed creature's toughness, so that's another way to potentially deal 13 damage to the opponent with our Phalanx. Then looking at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Concealing Curtains, a 1 mana 0-4 with Defender, for 3 mana transforms into Revealing Eye, at which point we can look at the opponent's hand, and then we may choose a non-land card from it, if we do, that player discards that card and draws a replacement. So this is another cheap high toughness creature that we can eventually transform, giving us a bit of hand disruption, which is very useful against combo and control decks. Then we've got Jasper Sentinel, the 1 mana 1 2 elf that has reach and can tap alongside another untapped creature to add 1 mana of any color, so it can help us ramp into our more expensive cards like the Phalanx while still being a high toughness creature. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Priest of the Haunted Edge, an 0-4 zombie cleric that can tap and sacrifice, and then target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the number of snow lands we control. And if we take a look at our mana base, we've got 16 snow-covered basics to support our priest, not going all in with the tapped woodland chasm, since of course a priest still has plenty of utility outside of the removal effect, as we can still potentially deal for damage with it thanks to our lumber knot, and it can also be sacrificed to a catapult captain. Then we also have two copies of the reclusive taxidermist, a 1-2 that can tap to add one mana of any color, so a little bit more ramp, and if we have four or more creature cards in our graveyard, it gets plus three plus two. For the most part, we're happy to keep it as a 1-2 since that enables some of our synergies, but once we get to the point where there's three or more creatures in the graveyard, then we're usually fine with having a 4-4 instead. And then we've got two copies of the Meat Hook Massacre as our sweeper of choice. As it plays well with our high toughness creatures, we can adjust the X to be just below the high toughness creatures, but it's usually going to deal with all the opponent stuff. And then it will stick around as an enchantment in play, and then whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we get to gain one life, and whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. And if you take a look at the deck, our deck mostly consists of creatures, which is great for our Augur of Autumn, the 3 mana 2-3 human druid, saying we may look at the top card of our library at any time and play lands from the top of our library. And if we've got Coven enabled, meaning if we control at least 3 or more creatures with different powers, we may cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. And if we take a look at the different powers on our creatures, got a lot of zero powered creatures, couple one powered creatures, so by the time we play Augur of Autumn, we'll often have Coven enabled, as this is one of our few two powered creatures, so it's very easy for our deck to enable Coven and start playing creatures of the top, making Augur of Autumn an awesome card draw engine, since we have such a high creature count. And to synergize with our Augur, we also have two copies of Cemetery Prowler, a 3-4 wolf with Vigilance. When it enters a battlefield or attacks, we can exile a card from a graveyard, and spells we cast cost one generic mana less to cast for each card type they share with the cards exiled with the Cemetery Prowler. So the Prowler can make all our creatures much cheaper, which then also helps out with the Augur of Autumn once we start playing a ton of creatures off the top. And then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Dormant Grove, which is not a creature, so it doesn't synergize all that well with Augur of Autumn, but is still quite synergistic in our deck as an enchantment, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, and then if that creature has toughness 6 or greater, we get to transform Grove into the Gnarled Grove Strider, a 3-6 tree folk with vigilance, saying other creatures we control have a vigilance, so we can attack with them and then still maybe use something like the Catapult Captain's ability after attacking to still finish off the opponent. 
And then our mana base doesn't have room for any creature lands, since we have a decent number of mana sinks, and we also want to keep as many snow lands as possible for the priest, as well as having all the other mana fixing from the black green pathway and the newly printed death cap glade. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand's a little bit on the pricey side. Could still try and keep, hope to draw third land, and then Augur can also help hit our land drops. So it's definitely a little risky, but I'll try. Also have a couple mana creatures we could draw. And we've got the curtains, which can tap alongside the sentinel to add one mana. And then of course, if we do eventually play Lumber, Knot and Phalanx, we're in business. A land is great. Ideally, we play Augur before playing our land for the turn, in case there's a land on top. Opponent on blue-black zombies, it seems, and they have two snow lands, so they can kill Augur next turn if I were to play it. So instead, I might just use the curtains this turn and have a look at what the opponent's working with. And, yep, yeah, zombie tribal. So... The Arch Ghoul and the Felstinger are kind of the scariest cards to me, although another Priest could also be effective, since we are a creature synergy deck at the end of the day. I think I'm taking the Arch Ghoul, since that's just going to provide a ton of card advantage, even with the Priests sacrificing. And then we can hit for three. And then next turn, we've got a couple options. Could also just play Dormant Grove. Put a counter on the Revealing Eye so it can attack past the Priests. And not expose any of my creatures to removal. And then the opponent might end up sacrificing Priests to Exploits, which we're pretty happy with. And then I can play maybe turn 5 Phalanx, and then turn after we can play Lumber Knot to enable the Phalanx. Seems reasonable. So the information from Revealing Eye is giving us a lot to work with here. Skullscab sacrifices a priest, which we're very happy with. Opponent can still take out the Ancient Lumber Knot with the Priest of Haunted Edge. So that's still a potential concern. And looks like a Shambling Ghast as an extra chum blocker here. Alright, Sentinel of the draw. So what's my play? Do I go for Phalanx? Do I play the Lumber Knot now and have it killed by the Priest next turn? I think I like Phalanx. And then I'll transform the Dormant Grove as well, that can attack. By putting an extra counter on Revealing Eye. So, sure, let's go for it. This would have been a lovely spot for something like the uh, Meat Hook Massacre. as a nice one-sided sweeper. Opponent has to double block the Revealing Eye. There is potentially the danger of blood on the snow, but I don't think I'm playing around it. Plus, we still have Augur of Autumn as a nice way to potentially recover from a sweeper. And then we would be very happy for opponent sacrifices Priest of Haunted Edge to Felstinger. It's gonna be a scab. Into a Felstinger. And yep, yeah, Priest is gone. And now the Lumber Knot and Augur of Autumn are safe. Now Felstinger can still trade for Phalanx. But that might be okay. And doesn't seem like we have to worry about a Sweeper here. 
All right. So, yeah, I think it's time for Lumber Knots plus Sentinel. And then opponent's going to trade Felstinger for Phalanx. They could double block one of my creatures with a couple 3-2s. That's okay. And then hopefully Augur of Autumn can pull us ahead to finish off our opponent. And they're at 5. So if at any point we find something like the Catapult Captain, we can burn them out with it. Opponent's got two cards in hand. And an Arch Cool is pretty decent here. And another Skull Scab can maybe exploit to trigger the Arch Ghoul. It's gonna sank the Arch Ghoul itself to make two zombies. Fair enough. Champion is 6 5, pretty large. So, yeah, now we just wanna try and find a Catapult Captain with Augur, although another Priest could pose some problems. So, still going to Augur first. Ooh, the Meat Hook Massacre on top. Well, we've got our game plan here, so probably no need to play Taxidermist since it's just going to die to the Meat Hook Massacre next turn. Not going to make any attacks, and then next turn... Massacre for two should be good enough. I guess the Shambling Gas can now finish off Augur of Autumn. Let's see if we can get some value first, another Meat Hook Massacre on top. What if I do it for X equals 3? Then Shambling Gas can finish off Lumber Knots instead of finishing off Augur, but we would kill the Scab. Think 2 is better. Opponent shrinks down the eye instead of Augur. Move to combats, and then what happens if I send everyone? They can take three from Revealing Eye, block the other three creatures. They can put Champion on, let's say, the Grove Strider. Then jump the Lumber Knots and block Augur with Priest. But then the uh, Meat Hook Massacre will finish them off. So yeah, this looks good. Alright, so opponent takes three, and then Meat Hook Massacre to close out the game. Sweet, so very fun game here against Blue Black Zombies, Revealing Eye, giving us a lot of information. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Curtains, turn one. Then turn three, can see if we want to transform, play Prowler up against a mono green deck. Right, so no turn to play, sadly. And then it's looking like we're transforming the curtains here, since Prowler doesn't have anything to exile. Augur Phantom could be good too. Let's have a look. Alright, so we've got a Renan 7, some creatures and a Blizzard Brawl. Blizzard Brawl is typically the card we want to take. Is that still the case here? I think so. And then I'll stay back with the Revealing Eye, or do I... Opponent's pretty likely to play creature next turn as opposed to level up ranger class. So I guess I'm okay trading 3 damage for 2 damage.
They could also go pack leader, level up ranger class instead of playing the troll. Alright, so traded 3 for 3. And then now is it time for Ancient Lumber Knots? I think so, and then we'll take it from the troll, but Lumber Knot can block the other two. And take it from there. And then I probably want to play Snowlands in case I draw a Priest later. And then Augur will have Coven enabled. There was an argument for taking a creature with I, so the Prowler had a creature to exile. It's gonna be an Asikas Chariots. And an attack for four. Ooh, Unhallowed Phalanx is interesting. If I play it now, of course, comes into play tapped, so it wouldn't be of much use to me on defense. Next turn. Do I instead want to play a Dormant Grove? Still doesn't transform right away, it can make one creature up to 5 toughness, so it has a better chance of blocking Chariot or Troll. Unless they level up Ranger class. Kind of like getting the Phalanx out there. And then I can always trade Revealing Eye for Chariot if they don't put a counter on it. Which then also sets up Cemetery Prowler next turn. And we'll pass for now. Opponent's at 13, so if we find a Catapult Captain, Phalanx can finish them off. Alright, Putin makes a tree folk. And then Chariot's gonna copy the tree folk token. And then we'll trade Revealing Eye for Chariot. Some aggressive attacks. So, probably no way I'm not blocking here. Their opponent copied the wolf instead of the tree folk, which is interesting. They might have just realized. And we did pick up our catapult captain, so if I play Prowler, I can exile the curtains and then still play captain. That seems good. And then next turn, we can kill them with the Phalanx, so just need to survive one attack, which should be feasible. I guess Rapone can activate Haven, level up Ranger class, put counter on Sentinel attack with everyone. But I think we can still survive at one. Point just leveling up Ranger class twice. So yeah, the captain should be able to get it done here. Target our opponents. Phalanx to the face. And there we go. Our Mimi Black Green High Toughness deck beating a pretty strong curve from Mono Green onto the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hands, okay, nothing special. Got some card advantage with Augur, hopefully. Some board control with Massacre. Might have wanted to play the Snowland actually in case we draw Priest. The more Snowlands, the better. Up against some mono white aggro. So the Meat Hook Massacre going to be quite powerful, most likely. 
And the beauty of Massacre is that it's often a one-sided sweeper, so we can keep developing our board whilst the opponent plays into it. And our high toughness creatures do a pretty good job defending our life total early on. So I'm gonna hide the double black from them so they don't worry too much about a sweeper like Massacre. So they keep playing into it. Can play our Lumber Knot next turn, so yeah, this draw is shaping up nicely. It's gonna be another Escort. So if I play a Lumber Knot, I don't really wanna trade fodder for their three creatures. But uh, I'll still gladly play it out. And then next turn, Fodder could also transform if we play another creature out. Ooh, Righteous Valkyrie. It's a little unexpected. That one can survive the Meat Hook Massacre more easily. But I can play Priest to still take it out. So let's go Augur and then see if there's a land on top. Another Lumber Knot instead. And then we'll uh, play the Priests, transform a Catapult Fodder. And do I want to attack? So if I attack with a Captain, they could like triple block it. Doesn't seem necessary. Next turn, we can use Priest on Valkyrie and then Massacre deals with the rest. Cigar of Splendor, so I guess they're more of a life gain deck than a Mono White Aggro deck. Pretty close to just killing my opponent here. So let's say I meet hook for one. Shrinks down my team as well, so I'm not dealing as much damage. But we're still dealing five, eight, nine, ten, plus three, thirteen. Seems worth it. And then I get to play some more stuff from the top. Or I could play. Yeah, I don't have the mana for Lumber Knots. So Massacre for one. And we'll attack. Maybe I have to watch out for a sweeper effect here. But we still have an auger coming up to provide more card advantage. And if they wipe the board, then Meat Hook Massacre would also drain them. It's going to be a Catilda instead. Can be taken out by priests. And uh, Phalanx is also a fun one with a uh, Catapult Captain. So how do I want to kill my opponent here is a question. I guess we can use Priest on Catilda. And then I can transform Courtyard and attack with the team. And that should do it. No need to choose anything. All right, sweet. Meat Hook Massacre once again doing a lot of work. On to the next one. We're on the play, our hand is keepable. Sentinel can make extra mana with curtains early on. And then we've got a Lumber Knot Phalanx combo. Up against the Blue Reds. Right, so can play a Prowler next turn if we don't draw land. Or I can go for Augur, hope there's a land on top. Might be better. Can transform curtains next turn to have a look. Opponent goes for iteration into Demon Bolt, maybe. Killing Augur and curtains. Nope. Frostbite killing Augur and Sentinel. Slows down my mana developments. 
Now I do have the option of playing Prowler with a creature to make future creatures cheaper. Could also use the Curtains. I think the critical turn is probably next turn to use Curtains before they can cast like a Burn the House down to wipe the board. So I could still wait a turn and then in the meantime Prowler vs Augur. If the plan next turn is to transform Curtains I'm not gonna have much use of the mana discount so I might prefer hitting an extra land drop here. Right, Phalanx on top instead. Opponent takes a turn off casting iteration. And finds a land. Right, still no land on top, unfortunately, but let's have a look with the curtains. And it's a Cinderclasm, divide by zero in hand instead. Don't think Cinderclasm bothers me. Uh, they could eventually copy it with iteration, but that's pretty far away. And divide by zero. I guess divide is a little bit annoying since I'm playing a lot of kind of expensive cards that take in bounce and I'm behind on mana. So maybe we still take the divide by zero here. And hit for five. Could have of course given them an even better card than divide, so that's the risk with uh, choosing something when it's not necessarily a back-breaking card. Opponent passes, finally land on top. And could also go for Dormant Grove. And then putting our creatures up to five toughness also saves it from double Cinder Clasm. Alright, iteration into Cinder Clasm. Alright, I guess it works. So they drew another iteration so they could do that to turn early. And now the Dormant Grove didn't do much, but glad I didn't play another creature into the sweeper at least. Opponent cast Epiphany to take an extra turn. Double iteration waiting in the graveyard. Gotta hope they don't find more copies of Epiphany, although they did just foretell, so that might be double Epiphany incoming with the Hall of the Storm Giants in play, which is gonna be tough to beat. But uh, yeah, I'm missing the double black, so I can't even massacre away the two birds. So what's my play? Probably just Phalanx and Transform Grove. Playing a Lumber Not or Prowler does not let me transform Grove right now. And I'm probably gonna need this as a chumper for Hall. not going for double epiphany. I guess they're still one mana short, so next turn they're going for it. And then this turn, if I play Lumber Knots, Phalanx has a pretty decent attack, and then it also blocks the hull, dealing 14 damage to it, so that's pretty great. Or we could just go for Meat Hook Massacre, kill the bird tokens that are currently in play. But the birds aren't necessarily killing me if I'm at 18. They would be dealing 2, then 4, then 6. So that's 12. And we've got the uh, hall covered with phalanx for the time being. So I can play Prowler into Lumber Knot here. Could also exile one of the Galvanic Iterations, so they have one fewer to work with. 
think I'm still going for my own creature here. If they only had one iteration, then exiling that would have made more sense, but... And then Phalanx gets to smash, can send Grove Strider into the hall. Alright, so we're still potentially in trouble if our opponent draws more goodies in their extra turns. But now we're setting ourselves up to win the game if we cast Massacre. And the Hall of the Storm Giants is not as much of a concern. Prismari Command to loot. So they've already gone through two Epiphanies. Gotta hope the two other copies are on the bottom. Alright, one more turn. What's it gonna be? Land. Well, they didn't immediately go for Epiphany, so there's hope. Two birds attack. That's a good sign. Massacre for one. Resolves. So now the only concern is opponent having a way of bouncing lumber knots so the ability doesn't take effect. But even then, I think I'm still happy to attack. We've got vigilance, so it's pretty safe to do so. A rending flame. Okay. I guess that'll keep them alive. So I can hit for two, leave this back to block hall. And we're gonna start exiling some stuff. So the game's not over, but we're in a decent spot at 13 life. And their only threat is a creature land. Ooh, and a catapult captain. Gonna do a good job of closing out the game as well for us. And our opponent explodes! Awesome! So we actually beat the Epiphany combo deck. So yeah, maybe this deck is real. We beat two tier 1 decks with mono green and Epiphany combo, and they both had very reasonable draws. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Hands a little bit on the slow side, but being on the play should make up for it. And then... Seems like we're up against a black, maybe sacrifice deck. Taxidermist, good draw. Another Shambling Ghast. Okay, so I can play Augur. And then if there's a land on top, we can play it. If not, I can still go land Curtains. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, it seems reasonable. And then now Coven is active. Can play creatures off the top. And as we see, Skullport Merchant, so... Blood on the Snow definitely has to be on our radar, and that's a card that can easily beat us here. Another Augur on top, although that's the type of card I would be happy to draw as a way to recover from a sweeper effect. And we do have curtains to have a look. So I'm not in immediate danger of our opponent casting in next turn, so I could wait a turn on using the curtains. 
And then for now maybe use Grove. As something that survives a sweeper. And then next turn we can have a look. And put counter on. Maybe on the Taxidermist. And we'll pass. Putting counter on Taxidermist does mean we shut off Coven briefly, but next turn we can get an extra counter somewhere. Right, it's gonna be Spider Queen. That we should be able to handle. Sentinel on top. So I could move to combat to get a counter and then play the Sentinel for free before doing anything else. And then I'll put a counter on maybe the Augur. No attacks. Lumber not on top. So what's my long-term game plan here? Because their opponent has a lot of chum blockers. Could just go very wide and then try and kill them in one or two attacks with lumber knots. Or hope to find a meat hook massacre at some point. For now, probably still wait a turn on curtains and then play this lumber knot for free. Okay, let's have a look. And double blood on the snow, so can take one, but still leaves the other. So I don't necessarily want to commit more creatures to the board. Could try and go for a last ditch attack. I guess I should have played Sentinel first anyway, since I'm not playing anything from hand. Now what I could do is potentially attack and our opponent will let the Spider Queen go thinking they can get it back with Blood on the Snow and then Prowler can exile it. Might be a worthwhile trade. And then I don't want to transform the Grove but I can put a counter somewhere. Let's say the Sentinel. So has an easier time attacking past the spider or the lumber knots, so they can't easily double block it. Could also go for taxidermist so the merchant doesn't block it as profitably. Sure, this is fine. And then we'll attack Spider Queen. Opponent can increase the Spider Queen's loyalty by sacking gas to Sculpture Merchant before damage. Right. Opponent lets Spider Queen go. And I think I give a Prowler to exile Spider Queen here. And then sure, opponent can wipe the board, but we still have some pretty good tools available. So they might go sacking some gas to draw, and then wipe the board next turn. So we're still probably behind, but we dealt with double blood on the snow, which is the card we're most terrified of. So they hopefully don't have too many more left. Opponent can attack with a spider token first. Nah, they're not gonna bother. Merchant is back. And it's gonna be an uphill battle from here, but uh, we'll fight a good fight. So I do have a counter here to maybe help me enable Coven, but doesn't seem like it's gonna happen this turn. So instead... Do I want to play something else? I think I still play Augur in case there's a land on top. And then I'll play the Fodder. Right. Lumber not on top instead. Uh, 
And I could transform the grove. Although I'm kind of happy with it as an enchantment. Put a counter on Augur. Meat Hook Massacre for five. Yep. At least I still have my Grove and they could have cast it for six pretty easily. Alright, time for Lumber Knots. Spread out the wealth a little bit. Although, if we put more counters on Lumber Knots, Grove could maybe transform so we can attack for six. Another Spider Queen. Envy the straw. I will cull the weak. And yeah, now we're in a bit of trouble without Augur providing card advantage. So I guess it's counter on Lumber Knots. Play backup first. But I'm expecting some instant speed removal here. My will cannot be denied. All right. Hunt for specimens to get mascot exhibition. So what are we hoping for at this point? Our own meat hook massacre, perhaps. I always reward the loyal. Catapult fodder could do some work too. But I'm sure there's gonna be more removal incoming. So fodder transforms. And then I'm probably still not interested in transforming the Grove. Can put a counter on Sentinel. And then we're maybe at the uh, creature slinging part of the game. But yeah, this was going to be a pretty rough matchup going into it. Blood on the Snow doesn't care how big our creatures are, still kills them, and just uh, the mix of removal, chum blockers, and uh, card advantage means that the mono black control deck's usually gonna pull ahead. It is nice that Sentinel's protecting Lumber not from Professor Onyx minus three, but this is gonna be a very slow and painful death for us as our opponent pulls ahead with their two planeswalkers and we draw land. Alright, so this game is pretty much over. Can't imagine a sequence that gets us out of it. But uh, yeah, overall still quite satisfied with how our deck performed. Can't expect to beat every single archetype, but I uh, think we've got an okay matchup against the two aggro decks in the format with mono white and mono green. And uh, yeah, if we've got a good draw Apparently we can even beat the Epiphany combo deck. Just uh, mono black or snow control is one too many hurdles to go over. But uh, yeah, if you're in a best of three setting, could potentially be addressed with a few sideboarded and discard effects. And more sources of card advantage that aren't creatures. Since Augur of Autumn, while a great card, does kind of play into the Blood on the Snow game plan. Another mascot exhibition. And a Tybalt on the splash, thanks to the treasures. Very nice. Finds my concealing curtains. And I think it's gonna be curtains for us here. As her opponent passes, Phalanx to draw. 
All right, I guess we'll transform the growth here one last time. And pass it back. And let's see if our opponent can close out the game this turn. And away you go. Professor still plussing, so next turn it can ultimate. To be fair, I don't think I've ever seen a Professor Onyx ultimate, so that would be kind of fun. I'd miss the For our opponent. Another mascot exhibition. Puts us to 12. Any chance my opponent ends up decking 21 cards left? I guess not. We're at 10. The weakness of the snow control decks, of course, is that they're quite weak against the various epiphany combo decks, since they're very slow to apply pressure, and they don't really interact all that much with the opponent's hand, so the epiphany deck has all the time in the world to set up their multiple extra turns to just win the game out of nowhere. So I hope our opponent goes for the Professor Onyx Ultimate. Is your opponent not going to ultimate Professor Onyx? That's a missed opportunity right there. Alright, so we get to see our black, green, high toughness deck in action, and faced a very wide variety of decks, multiple tier 1 decks, even managed to beat most of them. So overall quite impressed with how the deck performed. It has kind of the combo elements with Catapult Captain Lumbernaut to quickly deal damage, but it can also play a slightly grindier game thanks to Augur of Autumn mostly, providing a ton of card advantage off the top. So overall pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Now is it gonna take over standard? While I think it's well positioned against most creature aggro decks like the mono green and mono white decks, it will still struggle as we saw here in the last one against the various snow control decks. And while we did manage to beat the epiphany combo deck, it's still probably a somewhat iffy matchup in the sense that if we don't draw lumber knot, our deck doesn't apply a ton of pressure immediately, and that's exactly what we need to put the blue red combo deck under pressure and uh, close out the game before they manage to combo off. If we instead draw like the catapult captain, that might take a little bit too long to set up. So if we draw lumber knot, I think we've got a decent chance, otherwise, it's still. Uh, potentially a difficult matchup, although the curtains could also potentially help there if the opponent doesn't foretell their Elrond's Epiphany, we've got a chance to take it away. So overall, quite happy with where the deck ended up, and I'm excited to see more high toughness creatures in the future. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.